All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm not sure if Go will show up, but if he does, we'll just uh, take a break and let him make an announcement and then uh, move forward. So this morning, we're going to move in AutoCAD into something that's actually what I would consider to be really, really important. And yes, of course, learning to draw in AutoCAD is important, but at the same time, learning how to create an output from AutoCAD really matters. And I think that's the piece that oftentimes gets missed if you take an AutoCAD you know, specific class, for example. They'll talk a lot about how to draw in AutoCAD, but then they won't talk that much about the end product and how do we create a drawing that's a really good, beautiful drawing out of AutoCAD. And so today we're gonna kind of explore that concept. There'll be more work next class because we'll collage and we'll work in Illustrator a little bit to even further enhance the drawings. But today's really about that. It also will give you a chance because the, the physical part of creating this drawing isn't that difficult. It'll give you a chance to get caught up on more of the, the elevations if you haven't finished those elevations just yet. So um, I may also spend a little bit of time, depending on how today's lecture works out, showing you a little bit more techniques as part of the elevation views uh, that might be interesting to you. So we'll go through that in a little bit as well. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Hold on, we got to get organized here just a little bit. There we go. And I think we got everything up. Perfect. Okay, so uh, first off, let's take a look here at what we're working on today. And this is exercise 121. And really, we're talking a lot about how you set up a page, what your viewports are going to be, and creating this final layout. I do have linked here the line weight guides for plans and the line weight guides for elevations. So you can download those as reference. And one of the great things about setting up layouts in AutoCAD is that once you have the layout set up, you can keep working on the drawing and modifying it and changing it. And it's just a matter of recreating the PDF at the end. Um, and so it's, since the layout's done, it's a really easy process. It's just like printing. So I have here uh, a finished set of drawings. So I have my floor plan. This is the same floor plan that we worked on. I don't have the walls filled in on this one. So they're, they're, they're empty right now. Uh, but I do have you know, some basic furniture installed, uh, some basic provisions, et cetera. I have my south elevation down here. To the right here, I have my, uh, what would that be? That would be my west elevation. I have my north elevation and I have my east elevation. No, I did that backwards. Sorry, this is my east elevation. This is my west elevation. Sorry about that. Um, a couple things to note. I do have the slope input here. I will, if we have time today, I'll show you how you create that slope line, uh, but that's kind of an advanced topic anyway. So really what we're going to talk about is creating this layout. And so the first thing that you probably haven't really thought about yet is that when we're drawing in AutoCAD, we're fundamentally drawing everything at full scale. When you draw a line, that line is 24 feet or 12 feet or whatever it is. The walls are six inches thick. We're drawing everything at that scale. So it's full scale. We're not chopping anything down. We're not making, doing any math in the process. When it comes to creating our layout, that's when scale starts to matter because we're taking something that's full size and we're making it smaller. And we're going to do that using something called paper space. So AutoCAD's broken into two primary components. We have model space. And you could tell what model space is because that's when you have a black background and you're drawing in primarily white lines. That's model space. If we look down in the lower left corner of our window here, you can see that model space is the tab that we're in. It says model. Next to that tab, you may have layout one, layout two. You may have nothing. But there's also a plus sign for creating a new layout. If I click on that plus sign, We'll get a tab for layout one, two, or three, depending on how many you have in your, in your uh, already existing. For my case, the brand new layout is called layout three. If I were to click on that, what I end up with is a white sheet and what's called a viewport that looks at my drawing. This white sheet is representative now of a piece of paper, not of the full scale. So when we switch and we see the white piece, that is actually a piece of paper, a physical piece of paper that we're gonna be printing on. So let's start to set up some of the options for this. If I come down here to my layout three tab, 
And again, yours might be called something different. Uh, I can right click on it. And the first thing I can do is rename it. So let's go ahead and click on rename and I'll rename this one to be uh, final drawing. And that way it's clear when I refer to it. So the final drawing tab now is for my final drawing. I'll right click on that final drawing. And if we come down here, I have something called page setup manager. And the page setup manager is going to look an awful lot like the print dialog box once we get there. So the, here's the page setup manager. It shows me what my, my page is, this final drawing. And I can click on this box to modify. And this looks exactly like the print dialog box. So this is easy to, to work with. We've already worked with this a little bit. But once we set up these settings, they'll stay with the layout, which is awesome. So first thing, under printer and plotter, we're going to stop publishing to web as a JPEG or a PNG. And instead, we're going to create a AutoCAD drawing. And there's many different presets for this. We can use an AutoCAD PDF high quality print. That's a pretty good one. The most simple one is DWG to PDF. That works as well. Um, either one of these is fine. I'm going to use the high quality print. And it's going to ask, do you want to change the default paper size? Yeah, that's fine right now. But we're going to create new, uh, a new size paper anyway. So under paper size here, you'll see that there's a bunch of paper sizes listed. We're going to choose an Arc D. So if we come down here, we're going to see Arc D. We have an Arc Expand D and we have an Arc D. Let's just use the regular Arc D. And it's now making my piece of paper 36 inches by 24 inches. There's a printable area of 35, a uh, little, about 35 and a half inches by 22 and a half inches. That's to accommodate the printer margins. And if we were actually in person right now, um, I'd have you go to the plotter and print this out as an exercise. So you do that as part of your assignment. Since we're remote, you don't actually have to print it, but we're going to create this PDF nonetheless. So I have my drawing size at 24 by 36. When we come down here under plot area, instead of choosing a window like we have in the past, we're going to choose the layout. That is this page that we're creating. Under plot scale, we're going to choose to print at one to one because what we see on this page behind us is exactly what we want to have printing. Up here on the, the plot style table, your pen assignments, we're going to use the most basic one, which is the AutoCAD CTB. And then under our options here, under quality, let's go ahead and bump that all the way up to maximum. We have some options. Plot object line weights. Yes, we do want to plot that. Do we want to plot transparency? Yes or no? We can leave that unchecked for right now. Uh, we're going to plot with a plot style, and we're going to plot paper space last. That means objects that are in paper space like text or something, dimensions would print last. It's a good habit to keep that one checked. Okay. And our drawing orientation is already set as landscape. That's the way we want it. We'll go ahead and say, okay. And you'll see that my page just got much, much bigger. Right there. That now is representative of my overall page. I can go ahead and close this page setup manager and we could see our overall piece of paper that we're working with. So because we have this piece of paper, we need to go ahead and start to see our drawings. Uh, I want to make sure that nothing is currently on this page. So I'm going to go ahead and select the entire page. And uh, I don't think anything was selected. So let me just confirm that. So let's go over into the layout tab. So we've primarily worked in the home tab. Now that we're working in layouts, let's go over to the layout tab. And we're going to go ahead and create a new rectangular viewport. So right here. So it's, it's always tempting to come over here to new layout. That would create what we just did down here, the final drawing. But in this same layout viewport section, we're going to do a new rectangular viewport. You'll notice that there are other options. We could do an, a polygonal or an object. We're going to do just rectangular. So I'll click on rectangular. And we can look at our, our, our drawings down here or our options down here at the bottom. All these defaults are actually just fine for now. We'll go ahead and draw a viewport. I'm going to do it about that big. 
And you see that as soon as I draw that viewport, I get a view into my drawing. If I double click inside this viewport, I can actually zoom in on my drawing. So I could zoom in on the floor plan. It's often useful to kind of zoom in and get an approximate size for your floor plan. We can use the pan tool. It's available right here. You could also type in pan. So I can come over here, click on the pan button and move this. But this is also our opportunity to set an official scale for this drawing. So I'm gonna double click outside my object. Then I'll just single click on the border to select it. So I'm not working inside the viewport, I just have the viewport selected. And now if I look at my properties, and in order to see the properties, I need to actually type in properties. And I'll hit enter. Now, why is my keystrokes not, I started that earlier today, it's not on. Okay, hold on one second, let me get those keystrokes going for you. Sorry, bear with me for just a second. All right, and that probably means that my caffeine application isn't running either. So bear with me one more one more second here. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Now you can see what I type in. So when I type in properties, it brings up the properties window that is about the viewport and gives us all kinds of information about the viewport. One of the important thing though, is if we come down here to standard scale, right now it's set to custom. But if I click on that, I can actually choose a specific scale. Come on, there it is. So I could, for example, pick a quarter inch equals a foot, which is what I'm gonna ask you to choose for this. If you have trouble getting your uh, drawings to fit, you can use three, <coughs> excuse me, you can use three sixteenths to a foot. I'm gonna stick with a quarter inch per foot. And this then means that this drawing that I drew at full scale is at a quarter inch per foot, which is excellent. So I may need to make some modifications to this viewport. So I can, for example, take the viewport, I can make it a little bit bigger up there. And you see that when, when I adjust the size of the viewport, it also adjusts what's shown. So I'm getting more of the topography lines. I could again, double click to get inside and I could pan like that. Now the risk here is that when you're working and you double click inside your viewport, if you hit the scroll wheel, you're suddenly gonna change the scale again. I'm gonna press Control Z. The even worse risk is that if you're zoomed in, so let's say I zoom in and I notice a mistake and I wanna fix something down here, and I double click and I'm inside the viewport, when I go to zoom out, I actually can't zoom out past my viewport anymore, I'm stuck. So I'm gonna hit Escape and then I'll Control Z to unlock the viewport and then, oops, two Control Zs, Control Z and Control Z. There it is, now I'm back. So that's a big risk and people often get trapped there. What I'm gonna ask you to do, oh, looks like Lola just showed up. I see you popping in, Lola. Uh, hold on, we'll come back to this. Let me, uh, let me jump over and let Lola talk. Oh, uh, I don't wanna interrupt at all. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. okay. I'd, rather, I'd rather have you not have to wait around. So hold on, let me just stop my share if I can figure out where to do that. Stop share. All right, Lola, why don't you go ahead? We'll just take okay. a quick interlude and then I'll come back to this. Intermission. Okay. Hello, everybody. Good morning. I am Lola Cinco. I am a representative and officer of the ACE Club here at DBC, and I'm here to talk about the Architecture Spring Lecture Series this week. Um, so this week, tomorrow night, we have our guest speaker, Ben Wrigley from SCB Architects coming to speak. Um, so Ben Wrigley was, uh, he's a principal at SCB, and he was one of the um, leaders and spearheads in, in establishing SCB's firm here in San Francisco, as well as in Hawaii. Um, so he worked, he has a very um, amazing award-winning portfolio of work. And he also um, 
works a lot on housing, providing housing and providing mixed use buildings and spaces. So um, if you've ever driven across the Bay Bridge, you've probably seen this apartment building um, and it's uh, one Rincon Hill. And he was, you know, that was one of the first projects that the San Francisco office took on. And um, it, it really shows, he does these beautiful housing projects. This is um, in Maui. Uh, this is an apartment um, complex in Maui. And this is in Honolulu. Um, and he really does have a wonderful story, a wonderful journey. You know, he started in Chicago at SCB Architects and then he came to the West Coast and he started, he started the firm there. So this is in Berkeley uh, or in Oakland, it's in Oakland, um, another apartment unit, um, you know, especially in, in places that are really lacking in that housing. So it is gonna be tomorrow at 6 p.m. I'm gonna put the link in the chat. I hope to see all of you there. Um, come and listen, come ask questions. Uh, it really is wonderful to learn and you take away so much from, from, these, from these lectures from architects who have been working for a long time and have a lot to share. So yeah, I will, I'll let you get back to your class. I'll put that link in the chat and I'll answer any questions if you have any. Thank you, Lola. I'm muted. I'm talking and muted, but you know, that's the way today's going. Uh, thank you, Lola, for, for making that announcement. Appreciate it. I hope all of you guys can, can go and uh, learn from it. The link's in the chat and uh, we'll go back to class. Thanks. Of course. Of course. Yes. Have a great class. I'll see you in my um, second class. <laughs> yes. I'll see you in your second class. Have fun. This is a fun project. I love AutoCAD, so <laughs> have fun. To, and I love floor plans. Okay. Bye. <laughs> All right, so we're back. Um, and what I was just saying, and I'll repeat myself, this is actually a good opportunity. I'm glad Lola interrupted because um, it gives me a chance to repeat what I was talking about, about this, this viewport and explain it yet one more time because it actually is something that's really important um, because I've seen so many students get trapped into this. And that is that when you double click to get inside a viewport, that viewport becomes active. And you can zoom in and zoom out, which is of course changing your scale, which is bad. But the, the problem is that if you're, if you're to the point where you can't see the edges of the viewport anymore and you double click to get inside to zoom in and zoom out, if you go to zoom in and zoom out, you'll, you'll get yourself trapped where you can't actually get out of the viewport anymore and see your whole model space. Even if you hit escape, you're still kind of stuck. So what I'm gonna encourage you to do instead, let me. I'm control Zing to get back. That's really the only way of getting back is that we'll take the viewport once it's at scale. We'll again go over to our properties and you'll see that there's an option for display locked. Currently it's set to no. If we change this display locked to yes, when we double click and zoom in, it's zooming the whole layout. It doesn't change the scale of this. And that's really the important part of, of this piece of the drawing is that we are not changing the scale. So once we get the viewport set and we have it at a particular scale, we wanna come scale. Now it's time for another viewport. So you notice I didn't show any of the elevations in this view just yet. I want to uh, create a new viewport. I'm going to click on the new rectangular viewport again. Oops, sorry, it didn't click. There we go. And when I click on that new rectangular viewport, I'm going to draw another viewport. And this one will be down here toward the bottom. Like that. So we see yet another view of our drawing. If I were to double click, I can zoom in. And this time I'm going to zoom in on my elevation view. So there's my elevation view. I just want it close. I'll double click to get outside of my viewport. And then I'll single click on the border to select the viewport. I'll come over to my properties and I'll choose a standard scale also at a quarter inch per foot. There it is. So the scales now match. I'm gonna come over to the display locked and choose yes so that I can't accidentally change the scale again. I'll hit escape to get out of that. And so now I have my front elevation and I have my building. It would be nice if they were aligned. It's always a nice thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this and I'm gonna make sure that this corner, oops, right there, matches up with where it's gonna be on the floor plan above it. 
So I'm going to pull this down like that. And now this line lines up with that. It just helps visually to, to see this lining up. You notice that my viewport has moved and it's now going off the page. So I might want to shrink that viewport down. We'll move it over a bit like that. Now we also see that there's a topo line that's going through my drawing. We'll solve that problem in a little bit. So let's create another viewport. So I'm going to zoom out. We'll create another viewport over here. I'm once again going to use the rectangular viewport tool like that. I'm going to double click. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to look at my um, east elevation. There it is. Now, this one's a little bit problematic because it's on its side. Well, what I can do, let me again double click. I'll select the viewport. Let's change its scale. So I'll come over to my standard scale and we'll change that to a quarter inch per foot. I could adjust the viewport so that I'm actually seeing my building. Maybe it's about like that, but I can rotate this viewport. So it's selected, type in rotate. I'm gonna choose a base point to rotate from and I'll rotate this down so that it's in its correct direction. So that's all I did is I just rotated that viewport. Now I can move this over and set it up in that part of the, the drawing. You can see where I'm going with this. I'm gonna once again, click on the rectangular viewport. We'll create another viewport. We'll double click to get inside. We'll zoom in on our north elevation. I'll hit escape, double click to get out. Select it, come over to my standard scale and choose a quarter inch per foot. And uh, once again, I'll go to display locked and set that one to yes. Then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this viewport. So this one needs to flip all the way over. And then we'll move this up. Like that. Now I have one more elevation view. So there'll be one more rectangular viewport to create. I'll double click. I'm gonna zoom in on the uh, west elevation. Double click to get out. I always zoom in on the, the uh, elevation view before I adjust the scale because it's much easier to adjust it when you're seeing the object afterwards. So I'm gonna change the standard scale here to a quarter inch equals a foot. I'm gonna choose display locked as yes. And we'll go ahead and do rotate. Oops, helps if I can type here. And let's make sure it's straight up and down here. And I need to make some modifications to this viewport because obviously it's in the wrong orientation. So let's adjust that a little bit. Let's adjust this one a little bit. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and move this so that it's now up there. So if we start looking at these, maybe I'll do a little bit more in terms of alignment. You know, maybe I need to move these around. Sometimes it's a little hard to see how they're gonna look because of the boxes that go around them. Um, the boxes aren't ultimately going to matter. And I'm gonna show you how to get rid of those in just a little bit. But now that I have all of my four elevation views showing, it's time to go in and make some corrections. So you see that on all of these elevation views, I have the topo lines kind of running through the drawing. So we need to make sure we turn those off. And it's actually very easy to do it. If I double click to get inside one of these viewports and I go back to my home ribbon and I look at my layers, there it is, I can actually choose to turn off a given uh, layer in this viewport. So I can look over here and I can say, you know what, the topography layer, 
I don't want that to be on in this viewport. So we have our standard on and off. If I were to use that, let's say I just turned it off, it would turn off in all the views at once. However, right next to it, there's a turn on and off in the viewport only. So if I do that, it's gonna turn off the topo line only in this viewport. So I can double click in this viewport and again, come back here and turn off the topography. I can double click in this viewport, come back and turn off the topography. I can double click in this viewport, come back and turn off the topography. So I'm selectively choosing what layers are on in each viewport. So if, for example, you had a two-story house and you drew it one on top of the other, you could choose to have in one viewport, the second floor showing, and in the first viewport, having only the first floor showing. So you could selectively choose which parts of, or which layer is included in each drawing. Okay, so I have that set up. But the other part of this is I really don't want, let me double click to get out. I don't want any of these viewports showing when I go to print or plot. And I can solve that problem by creating a non-printing layer. So up here in layers, I'm gonna click, click to create a brand new layer. And this new layer that I just created, currently called layer one, I'm gonna change that to be no print. So it's now called no print. And I'll come over to the little printer icon and make sure that that's clicked and has a little red slash through it. That means that the, sorry, right here, wrong one. I have two selected. Let me make sure just no print is selected. There we go. Now, anything on this layer, this no print layer, isn't going to print. For me, out of habit, I change the color of a non-printing layer to be green. And I do that just because I'm consistent and I always do it. You can pick any color you want, but it helps me to see it. At this point, I will select all five of these viewports. So there's all five of the viewports and I'm gonna change them to be on this no printing layer. So let me close the layer properties manager. And from this drop down, I'm gonna choose no print. And you see that the borders of all these viewports change to being that green color. Now, if I were to actually create the PDF, and I can do that by just clicking on the printer icon, we'll plot a single sheet, and you just say, okay, all the options are already set for us. Let's choose where to save it. Let me go into my folder for today. When I choose to save this, It will make the PDF for me and it opens up a preview and you see that those borders have completely gone, which is excellent. And that's ultimately our goal. So at this point, now that I have the layout set up, it's really all about how does this layout look? Do I need to move? And sometimes you need to make these test prints to see like this elevation seems like it needs to go over and up just a little bit. This elevation could probably come up a little bit. These two don't look too bad. Maybe they both come down a little bit. So I can make those corrections back here in AutoCAD. This, I said this layout needed to go. Come on. Kind of over and up just a little bit. Maybe about like that. This one could also probably go up just a little bit. These two could come down just a little bit, but we're just fine tuning. And I move those together. These ones over here on the right side, there's not too much alignment that's necessary uh, because they're just additional views. So I have all of this set. The next piece is that I need to make sure that my elevations actually look good and that I have lines assigned to them, et cetera. Um, so I'm going to go back into my model space. I'm going to click on model space here. And this is where I can start to make changes to my drawing. And those changes are going to be reflected when I go back to my, um, my paper space for my final drawing. So for example, if I wanted to fill in all of the, the walls with a hatch, I could go ahead and fill all of those in and it would show up in my final view. If I wanted to add siding, which you can see I already did right here, I can do that. 
Let me go ahead and click that sighting for just a second. I'm going to erase it just so you can see how I would go about doing it. I use the hatch command for that. So I'll come up to my hatch tool right here. Previously, remember we did solid, but I can change and I could use any one of these hatches. So there's lots of different hatches. If I wanted to use, do brick, for example, I could do that, shingles, et cetera. Hatches don't always look fantastic, but sometimes they're a good quick way of adding some texture. So for the siding that I just created, I was just using a plain siding. So a plain set of lines, it was this one. And if I were to click on my two pieces, it fills in almost solid. Well, that's because the scale of the hatch isn't set right. So right here under hatch pattern scale, I need to change that. So let's try maybe 20. Okay, now we're starting to see the hatch. Not quite big enough, let's try 40. And that's feeling okay. Now, of course, it's on a diagonal and I don't want my siding to be on a diagonal. I don't wanna be stuck in the 70s or, or whatever. So I can come up here to angle and I can change the angle either to be vertical. If I go up by 45, it's gonna be vertical or I could go negative 45, which is gonna drop it to be horizontal. So it's a way of adding some easy texture to a building. You can also, of course, change and pick a different kind of siding. I could go in and, and choose the brick siding. But if I chose the brick, you can see that I'm gonna to have to adjust the scale a little bit differently. So it's always gonna change based on the, the hatch pattern. I can scroll down here and I can see even more hatch patterns long-term. So like I said before, I use this pattern uh, in here. Let me press enter to finish. And you can actually see that I have it on this piece of the building. There's the siding there. There's the siding there. When I create the hatch, if I wanted it to match an existing hatch, there's a great little match properties button that I can choose. And when I do that, it's going to ask me to select something to match. So I want to match this one. And that's going to be the same properties. Now, obviously, this is facing the wrong direction. So I'd come back in here after I match the properties and I'd say, you know what, I want it to be negative 45 for this view. And there it is going horizontal. Oops, let me close the hatch editor. And so that hatch has been applied there and there. So it's just this building that I've, I've added that little bit of hatch to. You can see that it's showing up because in the elevation view, we're seeing just a little bit of it. Um, this particular building, I don't have the peaked roofs. I do have a drawing that shows the peaked roofs here, but I didn't have all four of the elevation views. Um, so in this context, um, I again did the hatch, I did the siding, but I also added that was cast by the over. More advanced topic. And if you were planning on doing it, I would do it with, um, I would do it either. So let me look I'm doing shadows in this building. The only real shadow is cast uh, kind of in the front by these wings. So let me flip my view around. And let me zoom back in on this front elevation. There it is. So these little wings and this roof are casting a shadow. If I wanted to, to be able to figure that out, I could of course calculate it but I can also kind of approximate what's happening uh, in this particular view. So let's create a layer that's for elevation shadows, A dash elevation shadows. All right, we're gonna use a color for that layer and I'm gonna choose one of these grays. So we probably want kind of light gray. This is gonna be a bit of an experiment. We may need to change it uh, when we go to print it. We'll go ahead and say, okay. I'm gonna make sure that that, uh, where did it go? Huh, I don't know what happened to it. Eight dash elevation. All right, let's make that the active layer. And now we can go ahead and draw those. So to do that, we need some guides 
So I could use a ray, for example. I could also just actually offset, but sometimes it's helpful to know where that, that shadow is being cast. And it's, it's often easiest to do this just using a 45 degree line. So I'm gonna press tab and I'm gonna type negative 45 and then press tab. Oops, that's going in the wrong direction. You know what, let's just do a ray and then rotate it. I'll do ray. We'll go straight across. I'll take this ray, I'll rotate. And this would be a uh, negative 45, there it is. So I'm gonna be casting a shadow here. And this shadow is gonna be dependent based on how far away it is from this particular wall. And we could actually calculate this out, um, but a lot of this comes from just kind of approximating. The difference here is that this has a little bit of a sloping roof to it. So the shadow actually is gonna have a, 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 a top that changes just a little bit. So in this case, if it was a 45 degree shadow, it would be consistent as it was ca casting uh, in that it would be the distance from here to here would be casting the shadow to right there. So let's go ahead and measure that distance. I'll click on the little measure button. And actually I'm gonna choose the actual, come on, distance measurement. So I know what this is. And I drew this a long time ago, so I apologize. I don't actually remember what this distance was. It's probably four feet. Yep, four feet. And that probably means that this distance is two feet. Yep, two feet. Okay, so let's come down here. My shadow would be four feet over. So we could start here, we could go over by four feet. We could come up by four feet. I want it to be going perfectly vertical. There it is. And then in this back one, this is a little bit different because it was a two foot uh, piece. So. From a technical standpoint, because of that change, this would only be coming down two feet. So I come down by two feet to where it meets there. And then this would meet at that intersection right there. So all of these lines, I could actually, and probably should draw them on a non-printing layer. So they're currently on the elevation shadow layer, but I really probably should just put them on a no print layer. And then I could actually hatch this whole section. So let me go ahead and type in hatch. And this is gonna be a solid hatch. It's gonna be in color 252. And I would just start filling this in. And this is a little bit difficult because we've got so many little lines here to go and fill in. Now it's struggling with a few of those. It doesn't want me to fill in some of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this like that. I'll hit enter and then we'll come back and do another hatch to fill in those pieces that it didn't wanna finish. So we'll do that and that and that and that. And so we were basically able to create this shadow, okay? So this is all part of this shadow. This over here, is, is even, it's got the same little four foot wings on it. So this ends up being very easy. Uh, you could even do an offset of these lines, right? I could take this line, I could do offset. The distance would be four feet toward the inside. That gives me a guide. And so everything from here 
down and everything from here over to there would be shadowed. So let's get rid of that shape that I did. Let's take this line and this line and change it into our no print. And then we can come in and do the same uh, hatch. And we'd be starting to fill these in as shadows as well. You guys don't need to watch me do that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit escape um, and undo that. However, what I ultimately wanted to show you is that now when we switch over to the final drawing, you can see that that shadow then shows up as part of the final drawing. So what I've created in my model space shows up in my paper space after I've created it. So we could spend some time and really calculate out where those shadows were and get an even better looking drawing. You can see that I, I did that in this view where I've, I've cast the shadows again and figured out where they fall in these various uh, positions. It's the same thing. I'm just using a line here to interpret where the shadow would be cast. Okay, so that's, that's that. Uh, in this view, I did a hatch here that I'm using the uh, AR-roof hatch. So that represents a roof just as a way of kind of coloring it. Most of the hatches that I'm using here are colored lighter than black. So there's some version of gray. Okay, so the one other thing that I told you if I had time I would show you is how to calculate out where the slope of the um, ground would be. Uh, let me go back here and then we go back to my model space. I already have it on these views, but I'd like to show you how I got there. And again, this is something that's, that's definitely a more complicated topic. So both with the hatches, the shadows and whatever, if you don't feel comfortable in AutoCAD, this is not required. It's just my opportunity to teach you about these other more advanced techniques that help kind of the look of your building. So when it comes to the elevation views, right, the slope does play a factor. So I have this little piece of slope here, and the ground should have a bit of a tip to it. If it doesn't, and it's straight across, that's acceptable for the sake of this assignment. However, I would like to show you how to calculate that out. So I also wanted to kind of um, add some, some depth to my drawing. So I added a few extra topo lines in between. And that's just for the look of this drawing overall. But we'll work with just the primary topo lines, and I'll show you how to create that, that curve for the ground. So I'm going to create a new layer. And let me come down here. I'm going to do it. This is ground. Uh, I don't know. We'll just call it ground. I'm going to make that active. And I'm going to make sure that it's on. Come on. There it is. It is a non-printing layer. And I'm going to change the color again. We'll do uh, magenta. I'm going to make that active. There it is. Because all the things that I'm going to create here, I don't want to interfere with my drawing. So the first thing I need to do is understand where the drawing plane would be. We did this with the bounding box last class. I don't appear to have a bounding box on this drawing. So let me create a bounding box. So remember, this is just a box that is covering the full extent of our building. So it's right there. And what I can do is the elevation view is, is calculated right at this front edge. So if I did a construction line, if I went ahead and typed X line, and I created that construction line right at this face. That line then represents what's happening and where I'm taking the elevation view. And so from here, all I need is I need the intersecting points. I need where that X line crosses each of these topography lines. And you probably need about four lines to get it. And like I said, I'm going to concentrate not on my interpreted lines in between, but the main lines. So I'm going to go from this topography line to this one, to this one, and ultimately to this one over here. So let's go ahead and, and work with those. I'm going to use array. 
And I'm going to calculate, or I'm going to draw a ray that goes down from each one of those intersections. So I'll repeat the ray. There's my next topography intersection. If you're having trouble snapping to the intersection, you may need to turn on down here your intersection snap. Let me go back to my ray. There's my intersection there. Repeat the ray one more time. And there it is. So I've done that with four. Now, somewhere down below my elevation view, I'm going to do another X line. So remember, an X line is a construction line. It just goes off to infinity. Now, each one of these contours represents one foot. So with this X line, I'm going to offset it by one foot. And I'll do that four times. Excuse me, three times. And I'll hit Enter. Now, remember this is sloping. Actually, in this case, I'm doing the front elevation. So it's sloping from the high point on the right side to the low point on the left side. So now I need to draw a line that starts at this intersection, moves to the, the first line down, and then keeps going. So I'm going to do that using a tool called a spline. And the advantage of a spline, and I'll show you this in just a second, is that it, it basically creates curves that go through specific points. So I'm going to create that spline. And it's available under your drawing tools. It's right there, is spline. And I'll create the spline starting there. Sorry, my mouse froze there on me, to this next point down. We'll come to the next one here, to that point down, and finally to the last intersection point, and hit Enter. And this line that I just created is now what the slope of the ground would be at my building. So all I need to do is move it back up to my building. So let's go to Move. And we come back up to my building. And it would, it would show up somewhere in this neighborhood. Now, technically, I need to be able to pull these lines around the corner to make sure that all of them uh, would line up with each other as the slope works on all of them at once. But I at least wanted to show you the process through which you're creating that. So I would say, in, in general, below the finished floor height, you're going to be down at least 18 inches, maybe 24 inches. That's kind of a safe place to be for your elevation view. We don't need to be more technical than that, but I wanted to at least show you how to create that. Again, all of those lines were on a non-printing layer. I would ultimately change this to be on the elevation layer, and I'd trim it, and that would then create this, this slope. You can see that I already have the slope uh, established here, and I used the same method to get the slope on all of the sides. So that's definitely an advanced topic but I'd rather show it to you so you're aware that that exists as a strategy. So again, if I come back to my final drawing, right, we can see that everything, everything that I've done, remember the pink lines are going to be non-printing lines, so they're not going to show up when we go to print. Uh, let's go ahead and test out this shadow and see if we even like it at this point. So I'll go ahead and go back to the plot icon. We'll continue to plot a single sheet. All of these options by default are just fine. And we can go ahead and replace the one that I already created. So yes, let's replace it. And we'll open it up. And yeah, that actually, that shadow doesn't look too bad. I could add a little bit more shadow in these other views as well. But again, that's, that's uh, kind of a more advanced topic um, and, and would take me a little bit more time to create the shadows in, in all the different views, okay? One of the other things that you'll notice is that line weights have now been applied it looks like maybe I even have a, an error here. Let me zoom in. All right, looks like my doors somehow got assigned a phantom line weight or a line type, excuse me. So we need to change that. So I'll go back into my AutoCAD. Let's go back into model space. I'm betting that happened in the layers. So let's open my layer properties and let's look at my doors 
Yes, the line type was set to phantom. That was a mistake. Let's set it back to continuous. And now that's fixed. And then we can print it again. Continue to plot a single sheet. Oh, sorry. I wasn't supposed to print it from there. I need to go to the final drawing. There it is. And now we can print it. Click on plot. We'll continue to plot a single sheet. Say, OK. Yes, we can go ahead and replace it. And yes, we want to override it. And there it is again. And now the doors have been fixed. So the other thing that might be a good idea now that we're closing this is we might want to look at this not in just a preview mode, but let's go ahead and open it in Illustrator. So you guys have worked in Illustrator before. So let me go ahead and open up in Illustrator. And this is one of the beautiful things. The PDF that we just created keeps its live lines. So we can actually see the lines in Adobe Illustrator. So give me a second for Illustrator to open, and then we'll take a look at it. Perfect. And let's go ahead and open that PDF. So I'm going to go ahead to go to open. And that was saved in my folder for today. Let's go to OneDrive. Let's go. Come on. There it is. There's my PDF. We'll go ahead and click on open. Right. And so now you can see that I can actually, if I, if I double click enough, I can end up being able to select any one of these individual lines. And so next class, we're going to talk about collage work that you may want to do or corrections that you may want to do um, in Illustrator after you create your PDF. So we'll go through Illustrator in far more detail next class. I'm going to press control zero. Uh, sorry, I'm on a PC. It has to be control zero, not command zero. There it is. And once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and export this as a JPEG. So we created the PDF from AutoCAD, but now from Illustrator, this is where we'll export the JPEG. So I'll go to File and then Export and choose Export As. And this time it's going to be a JPEG. So we'll come down here to JPEG. It's going in the same folder. And we'll go ahead and click on Export. And that'll give us, let me up the screen resolution to, to high right now. We could even up the quality to maximum. So we have the PDF and we have the JPEG. So when you turn in your canvas today, or when you finish uh, this particular uh, drawing, I'd like you to turn in the JPEG because it proves that you actually opened it in Illustrator and then uh, exported it in Illustrator to JPEG. OK, so like I said, I went and, and started working on my elevations a little bit more. So you have time as part of this exercise. The layout part isn't that hard, so you have a little bit more time to rest of your elevations done. And I'm doing that on purpose because I want you to be able to finish this project. All right, so spend your extra time getting your elevations ready. Next class on Monday, right, we're going to work on doing some extra collage work in Illustrator. We're going to add some text and type and kind of make this look like a really nice um, end product. So we'll do a little bit of extra work on Illustrator at that point. OK, so the more you get done between now and next Monday, the better off you'll be for Monday. Actually, I would say after Monday, you really can be done with this assignment if you put in the work now and get your elevation views done. OK, so at this point, I'll let you go. We will have uh, check ins like normal. Let me stop my share here. And. Uh, we will have check ins like normal. Um, so I, if you guys are in the next group, uh, stick around and we'll, we'll talk. For those of you that are uh, already done with your check-ins for this week, that's great. If you have questions, however, don't hesitate to come back and actually uh, you know, ask me those questions. Let's work through any AutoCAD problems you have. Um, I know that some of the stuff I, I <coughs> excuse me, that I did today was a little bit um, on the advanced side in terms of calculating the
the elevation or whatever. Again, those are optional pieces. If you just have a straight line, likewise, the shadows are optional, but I wanted to show you that process. The siding on the building using a hatch, that's also optional, but sometimes it's, it's worth experimenting with. So I've, I've given you those pieces to try to experiment with, but the important thing is getting the elevation views done, the line weights done, et cetera. Okay, so I'll go ahead and let you go. And um, I'll talk to anybody that needs to stick around with questions or um, I'll talk to you during your check-ins.